gluten to gallbladder, and gingivitis, and all points in between. I'm Dr. Bob Martin. Tune in to my Sunday talk show at 10 o'clock on Talk 1470. WNN. Now you can get Talk 1470 WNN on 95.3 FM2. Loud and clear. Health and Wealth Radio, WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Hi, I'm Alicia Khoury, and I'm here to influence, educate, inspire, and entertain you with audacious confidence. Audacious confidence is the unshakable belief in yourself that's so bold and so daring that you live your life without limits or restrictions. So join me on my show, Unleash Your Audacious Confidence, so we can discover the unknown you. Call in to join the conversation at 888-565-1470. Let's get started. Hey, 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 it's Monday. I am back. This is Alicia Curry here. And as usual, I'm inviting people on Facebook. You know, I'm just getting everybody all situated, um, letting them know I'm on live. Hello, everybody. So I'm here today. Listen, it's the end of October. Where did October go? I don't know. One minute, we started off the month talking about Breast Health Month, October being Breast Health Month and encouraging everyone to get yourself checked out and to get yourself, get your mammograms, get your ultrasounds, get your thermography. I had Ashley on talking about thermography. We had Jamie teaching you how you, um, how you can volunteer to help women in um, underprivileged neighborhoods get free mammograms. You can volunteer to help out. All this information is on my website, acradio.live. I also had a special guest call in, Marty. He called in. He um, was one of the 1% of men that actually get breast cancer. And he gave his testimony of how um, early detection saved his life. And so we had a full month. We've had a full month. And um, I had other guests. We talked about a lot of things this month. But before I get to my guest this for today, um, the last day of the month, I wanted to say, well, tomorrow is the 31st of October. Most people will be celebrating Halloween. Well, we will be celebrating my baby girl's birthday. It's my firstborn's birthday tomorrow. Hi, Cassie. (laughs) Cassandra will be 20 tomorrow. I'm wearing her little choker today. Um, This is for me to remember to say happy birthday, baby. So my little girl is 20 tomorrow. Wow. (laughs) So anyway, (laughs) moving right along, because this is just a half hour show. I just want to say hi to all of you who are listening and watching. (laughs) And I'm going to have, well, I got to introduce my guest because she's here. She's on the line. That is Lorinda. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Lorinda. Hi. Let me, let me give you your bio. So Lorinda is another um, contact. I may listen. LinkedIn is phenomenal. Let me just tell you, LinkedIn is an amazing resource. And I, um, I came across her profile and reached out to her and we, we started a conversation and she is an amazing woman. We had so much fun on the phone, right, Lorinda? And so Lorinda, (laughs) Lorinda Buckingham is the creator and CEO of Modern Empowerment, where she serves as a business strategist, career change agent, and success blueprint developer. Uh, Modern Empowerment provides empowerment and training services in professional personal, and personal development, entrepreneurship, corporate training, outreach, and speaking, and was founded as a woman-owned minority business in the metro Atlanta area. So if you're in Atlanta listening, Lorinda is yes. in your neighborhood. <laughs> she is a happily married woman uh, and mother of three children much like me i have three kids as well we have a lot in common um she she also um is her educational background she's an alumni of tuskegee university she went to rama bible training center um she has over 15 years of corporate and business expertise and she was trained by the john maxwell team so um (laughs) cool is that (laughs) oh my baby girls just said oh thank you mama (laughs) so um you are living your dream as an entrepreneur you've left you've you're a corporate escapee right 
and you're living yes. the dream as an entrepreneur. Um, I don't know, Freddie, can we get a two shot on the on the screen too, please? Thank you. So, uh, Lorinda, welcome to the show. Yay, Thank I'm you so, so much glad for to have you. me. Yay. I'm so excited to have you on today. So, um, I want to ask, what is modern empowerment? Oh, thank you for asking. And again, before I say anything, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on the show. <laughs> um, this is a, uh, a great chance to just talk with you and just to share with people about uh, what modern empowerment is. And modern empowerment is a company that is designed to help modern leaders, people who are looking for resources to juggle in leadership empowerment and have homework life balance to be able to be the type of leaders in their home and as well as their business. So it's kind of like a model after what it is that I've done as well, being a mother, being right. a wife, uh, being in a professional environment. And it's something for both men and women to be able to get resources so they could be the best leaders in the modern world. Excellent. And so I know I kind of skipped over this, but I read a little bit of your bio, but what would you like people to know about you that I did not have mm -hmm. in your bio? I would like people to know that I'm a very down to earth and relatable person. Um, I'm a fighter. I'm a hard worker. I'm the type of person who has always represented the underdog. I know what it's like to work hard. And when I go out to different companies and different churches and organizations to help people, I'm always looking to make a connection with people. Um, that's the difference in what I bring to my training, to my programs, is that it's not just about giving information, but it's about making a connection to people so that they can relate to uh, what's going on so they can be the best in their companies, the best mothers, the best fathers. And that's what I want people to know is that I give from my heart, and this is what I'm passionate about. Yes, you are. <laughs> and. And I do want to ask you because um, when it comes to leadership, we talk about leadership at work and leadership at home as well. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and being a wife, how does your role as a leader in your, you know, the CEO of your business, when you get home, how do your roles <laughs> switch? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. I think that uh, when you look at being a CEO, you have to know how to take off the hat. So what I always tell people is I give them an analogy of putting on a hat. So just think of a hat with a label on it that says CEO <laughs> and then have a hat down that has a label that says wife. And so when you go into the office, put on a hat that says wife, that says CEO. And then when you come home, put on the hat that says wife. And, and you have to learn how to balance and just move away from that. Because, you know, because sometimes when you're a CEO, you have to tell people what to do. Right. You have to try to get things done. And it doesn't work too well if you try to tell your husband what to do or you try to... <laughs> Do something like that. So that's a great question. But I always tell people, think of a hat. And even if you have to go buy some hats to remind yourself, <laughs> uh, just so switching fine. over, that will you know, help a whole lot. <laughs> you know, I had a, um, a relationship expert last week on the show, and it was the same thing. And she said, you know, when she's at home, she is Danny with an E, and when yeah. she's at work, she's Danny with an I. So Absolutely. just to know what the difference is. Um, so that's great. And so, so another question I had is why, why do you think people need personal development? Why is it important to, to keep um, kind of developing yourself? Because we know why professional development is important, but why is personal development is important? Uh, personal development is important just as, as uh, professional development because it's continual improvement. Uh, we're never finished working, so we're always a work in progress. So when we continue to work on our personal life, we continue to work and, and grow. So think about it as a marriage. It's the same question. is that If you went to have your wedding ceremony and you just said, I do, and then you were done, well, that relationship <laughs> is not going to work too much. You still have to continue to date each other, work right. with each other. You have to continue to do it. So for, so personal development is the exact same way. You're continuously growing as a leader in your personal life, growing as a leader in what it is that you do so you can be your best self in the future. That's excellent. And that kind of leads me into my next um, my next question for you, because this show is all about confidence and, you know, how oh, to yeah. unleash that confidence <laughs> in yourself. So um, it's important to keep developing because, again, you know, if you're struggling with confidence and self-image, how how do you overcome that personally and professionally? Because you have a lot of tools in your little bag. 
Exactly. I got a, little, a lot of different tools in there. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is come to know yourself. I believe a lot of times people are not confident because they're not aware of the power that they have, of the good things that they have. Maybe someone told them something negative. Maybe mm. they saw something that told them they weren't good enough. So the first step that I usually share with people is to first get to know yourself and the first get to the point of liking yourself. That's the first thing in professional right. or personal development. Um, just knowing how valuable that you are. And right. that builds your confidence because regardless of what anyone else say, then you'll have confidence for yourself. That's so true. That is so true. <laughs> and I just want to give a shout out to those. We have quite a few people watching on Facebook and on Periscope. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions for me or Lorinda, please feel, feel free. I'm tying up my um, <laughs> my words. Feel free to call us. Call in at 888-565-1470, 888-565-1470 um, if you have any other questions. But um, I, I love the fact that you are a faith-based operation. You know, you make no yeah. apologies for loving God <laughs> and using that tool in your, in your business because you do have a degree from Rama. And, and being able to, to kind of be grounded in that, that, that is part of your coaching, correct? Absolutely. Um, and, it, and it's an option. So Modern Empowerment is a faith-based for-profit business. And so what that means is that when I created the company, I created it with the intention of it having godly principles to steer the company. So when I wanted to hand this company over to my children or you hand it over to someone else to understand what was the values of this company and me being a faith-based person, um, my values was guarded by um, just prayer and being led by what I believe to be in the word of God. And then, but when people come into my program, I go to different corporations and in different places where they have diversity and inclusion. And so in those places, I don't necessarily um, just go out there and just say things. Right. About You're not preaching, faith. but, but right, the principles you know, are the foundation. Development, <laughs> but it's available upon request. So if someone wants to go through my business coaching program or if they want to have different things, but they want to have um, prayer, like prayer beforehand or prayer afterwards, or they want to invite that, then they can because my coaching program is an invitation. It, it's the person who sets the agenda and they give me the opportunity and the permission to do that. So because of my Rama background, if someone wants to engage in our program and they would like to have Bible-based or faith-based principles, I'm equipped to provide that as well as an option for them. And it's also an option if someone is not interested in having that. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So how do people begin to notice results in your programs? One of the biggest things that people begin to notice is that they begin to notice that they don't have as much stress. Mm -hmm. You start to see them a little bit more happier. You begin to see them go on that vacation that they've been postponing. <laughs> right. uh, maybe they have a little extra tan because they begin to feel better about themselves. You see them smiling more. Their head is up. Their their posture is different because a lot of times when people don't feel good about themselves, they're down. Right, and everything's you know, they, closed They're in. very hunched over. But when they start to feel good about themselves, they're up. So when they go through the program, I'm looking for those type of results. So when they start going into work, they feel better. And it also, it helps with people with sales, connections, uh, when they have to talk to people and try to connect with them to make sales. When you feel good about yourself, you begin to do better in your business. Right. Because it's, again, it's all about building you up from the inside and building up that oh, absolutely. confidence. And, absolutely. <laughs> and you can't be a, le a leader. You can't have leadership without confidence. Oh, absolutely. Right. And, and even just having the leadership to, to know how that you need lead yourself, confidence. needing to, knowing that you need something is leadership. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of times people won't even admit that they need something, <laughs> knowing that you need the confidence to go forward, knowing that you need to work on being your authentic self, ah. knowing that you need to um, increase in how you connect with people. I mean, you can work in a company, but not necessarily know how to talk to people or connect with people, but knowing I, that you need that work, that is leadership. And yeah. taking the next steps to get it done is leadership. Excellent. Well, we are going to take a quick little break and we're going to come okay. back with more from Lorinda. Awesome. Don't go away. <laughs> If you lack confidence and boldness to go out and conquer the world, here's a valuable resource. 
In my book, Your Signature Style, Unlocking the Confidence, Style, and Influence of the Savvy CEO, I'll take you through a process where you can release your fears and embrace your femininity as a powerful tool to unleash your audacious confidence. This is where it all began for me, and I want to share it with you. Get your copy today at acradio.live. Bring out your beauty and confidence from the inside out. Visit acradio.live. Afraid of needles? Anxious about going under the knife? Do the words invasive surgery make you queasy to think about? After years of being mistaken for someone in her 20s, Alicia Curry, a mom of three in her late 40s, finally got tired of hearing, you should write a book about why you look so young. So that's exactly what she did. In her book, Age Younger, 21 Tips to Make Your 40s Look Like Your 20s, she outlines 21 of her top tips for looking and feeling decades younger. These tips can easily be implemented into your own lifestyle so you too can make your 40s look like your 20s. Go to acradio.live to order your copy today. You're listening to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence with Alicia Curry. Now, let's get back to the show. We are back with my special guest, Lorinda. And I just want to say quick shout outs on, on uh, Facebook. Thank you, Deb. Thank you guys for watching. Hi, Ron. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Jenny, Sebastian, Diane, <laughs> Edlene. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. And I have uh, Lorinda here with me from she's up in the Atlanta area. So if you're watching, if you're if you're from that area, um, you know, you feel free to connect with her. But she works with people not just in Atlanta. She works with with um, companies and individuals around the country and around the world, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, Modern Empowerment, uh, we are a global uh, business. We are able to do training all over the country and all over the world. So we have the capability and the capacity to reach anyone. I always tell people if, if they have people they need to be trained, we will come. <laughs> yes, if you need to be trained, they will come. <laughs> we will come. <laughs> nice. So um, is is professional development a one-time thing? So like if someone coaches you, um, contacts you to coach with them, is that a one-time thing or how, how does that work? Well, coaching is, is uh, designated from the person. So it really depends on each individual person. Um, it's customized for, for each one, it's depending on what they actually need. So they so they may have a program that goes three months or six months or nine months. We even have some that go for a year, depending on what their goals are mm -hmm. personally and professionally. And the difference is, I want to say, is that coaching and, and therapy are two different things. Coaching uh -huh. deals with the future, but therapy deals with the past. So as a coach, I deal with people with their future. And even though I have the ability to kind of understand where they go with their past, we always move them into their future. That's a, a great coach, distinction. And that's a great. And, and the thing about coaching, too, is that our uh, sessions, everything that we do in our training is strictly confidential. Um, a coach has the same type of um, backing and that's certified through the John Maxwell team as, as anyone would have that has been a licensed professional. So we take it very seriously. And that's why when we have coaching virtually and on site, all of our um, virtual and coaching on site is all confidential. Excellent. Well, I thank you for making that the, the difference there. And yes. um, <laughs> speaking of which confidentiality, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> this is, <laughs> so funny now that we're talking about confidentiality to ask you to tell me a story <laughs> about any <laughs> you know any issues or situations that you've had that um can help someone understand how you can move someone from you know from one point to the next from point a to point b but don't use any names you know the names have been changed change to I protect the names. innocent <laughs> Well, I want to share one in particular. I have a, I have a few, but this is a good one. Uh, it was this uh, one person that had an issue. Uh, they were working in a company, and they had high warranty claims. There was different um, problems where uh, the company was losing money, and they were trying to figure out ways to reduce costs. Mm -hmm. um, the person went through my coaching program of learning how to communicate and connect. They were trying to so are they in management they level? What level These were they? Employed this is a this is a employee level, senior engineering level. Okay. And so we're we're there. We're talking about um, how they can improve their communication. And what we discovered is that they had an issue with confidence, and we tried to and we worked through that for them with confidence. 
they ended up going to meet a customer <laughs> that had an issue. They had one conversation with the customer and figured out what the root cause to the problem was. They figured out how to solve the issue, and they ended up saving the company hundreds of thousands of dollars as a result wow. of implementing a countermeasure. But the one part that I always share with people is that if she didn't know how to communicate, if she didn't know how to connect with those people, she would have just walked in and just did a routine checkup and walked right back out. And the company would have not have known how to reduce those um, claims. So for this particular person, um, it actually turned out very good, and it saved the company a lot of money. Wow. So you um, had a career as an electrical engineer. and. Yes. Um, especially with the expertise in quality and design. And yes. so my question is really about your ideal clients. Do you focus more on corporate, on on certain types of, of um, industries, or are you kind of broad-based? Um, the ideal client is, is, a, is a company that is, is more corporate or manufacturing, uh, manufacturing, healthcare, um, especially like those that are trying to get magnet status or they're trying to um, get different quality in their in their company. Um, leadership development goes across all industries. It, it really does not matter what industry it is. It's really based upon if they have a program or if they have staff that they would like for them to do better um, in customer service, how they improve their connections with people, trying to increase their sales, uh, trying to make a difference and a positive difference in the community. I worked with a STEM program with seven and eighth graders, teaching them how to do soft skills. And that was something through a corporate outreach. So whatever that comes through, um, any company that wants to uh, grow their company, that, that will work out for them. Awesome. All right. So you're not necessarily just speaking to engineers out there. <laughs> no, actually, I, I mean, I just helped this one lady uh, without saying who it is. They, they were actually was going through an issue with confidence, and I helped them with the PowerPoint presentation. They went through our coaching program. She did a presentation for her vice president and ended up getting a promotion and getting placed on a leadership team um, in nice. Arizona. So it, it, it actually works out no matter what industry you're in, uh, whether it's communications, banking, mortgages, real estate, or any type of um, industry. If you're looking to go higher, become a better person, this program definitely works for you. Okay. So in the f uh, few minutes we have left, I've, I want to <laughs> pick your brain a little bit to okay. help our audience out there, those who are listening, those who are listening on the radio, who are you know watching us live on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you're listening and watching, um, if you can share one or two tips, if we have time, to take okay. someone from, you know, help them build more confidence, run their jobs and their business better today, what would those be? Uh, one tip that I would give people if they wanted to have more confidence is to first start your day off with speaking confidence and having affirmation words to yourself. Um, I think that before you go into the office, that you should try to make sure that you're in a positive space. I've always done that. I, re I suggest that to people that before you start your job, before you start your work, you give it 110%. And, <laughs> and that is a smile. And <laughs> have to come in and, 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 and sit there and, and just, you know, have yeah. a good time. Um, the Don't be grumpy is, all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. nobody wants to be around you. <laughs> nobody will want to be around you the whole day. And and the second thing is is to know your value and to bring value to the table. Um, know your value. Know what you bring to the table. Um, look for ways to add value to your company. Look for ways to add value to your management, to the executives. And if when you're looking for ways to add value to others, it builds your confidence. It allows for you to feel better about yourself. And it also lets you know that you, you're operating in a way that's intentional. One of the things I tell people is to be intentional about um, being positive, being confident, being a person of influence, being a person that communicates and connects. Be passionate about what it is that you're doing. So I think if people take those tips, that they would just re you know revolutionize everything that they're trying to do at their job. Now I have a really quick question. I have just a couple minutes left. I keep checking the time. If you see me looking over my shoulder this way, I'm looking at the time because the clock's kind of behind me. Um, but as far as knowing your value, because this is a big one for, for people yes. with, with low confidence or low self-esteem, how do you recognize what your value is? It may be too complicated a question to answer in the few minutes we have, but 
how do you recognize value? Uh, one thing I tell people when they come through my coaching program, I actually have them write down everything good about themselves write down everything that they feel that is of value and write it down on a piece of paper. And a lot of times people think things, but they have to say it. They have to write it. They have to put it down on a piece of paper. So one of the quickest things that someone can do if they're listening right now is to grab a piece of paper, get a pen, and write down I everything that. that is good. Everything and don't stop. Don't it. stop until you get to 100. Right. Don't <laughs> stop until you get to 100. I love that. <laughs> Just keep, and if you if you get stumped, ask somebody, ask people. You know, some exactly. someone asked me. I I I spoke last week at a, um at this at this uh, event, and someone came up after and asked me about that. You know, how how do I know what that I'm giving value to people? I said you can ask people, ask them yeah, what ask what them. ask them. Yeah, ask don't them. be afraid to ask somebody what your value to them is or what what they see as as um. A positive or um, or a I'm, my mind is blank right now. <laughs> what, what they see as something that you have that's unique and that you're gifted in. Don't be afraid to ask people if if because sometimes we're too close to ourselves to see it. Exactly. So sometimes you and just then, need to ask somebody. And then too, sometimes you'll see that lane when people asking you for things anyway. I mean, do people always ask you if you can decorate? Can do they always yeah. ask you? Can you bring the fit, the favorite dish to the birthday party? Right. Do they ask your av uh, advice about what they're wearing? Usually, there's already indicators about what you're good at and what value you bring, but we just overlook them because maybe we want another value. Right. That we, we want. want, we want I want your value over have. there. <laughs> Like, I want that one. Like, okay, yeah. no. <laughs> You're going shopping. I want this one. Exactly. I want this one. No, you already have that. So. You already, and the best thing for people to know is that they have value. If they were born and they, they're they here, they were born with a purpose. They were born with That's value. Right. So it's not that they're getting it. You're, they already you're have it. You need to discover it. Exactly. You need to discover the value, discover the purpose. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. I love it. So that's some homework assignment for you guys right, to sit exactly. down and write it out. <laughs> anyway, my time is up. Thank you, Lorinda. I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you all okay, for watching. Thank, you, thank so you for coming. And next week, don't forget next week, I'm going to have a wonderful guest. Dr. Jenna is going to be on. She is amazing. Okay. So stay tuned and join me again next week. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Mwah, 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 mwah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>